Hey guys, welcome back. So now it's been a while since we talked about some Black Panther, but we gotta talk about what's going on here in King and Black. Like what is going on here? Because when no symbiotes make their way to Wakanda, it just feels like another epic chapter for the future Wakandan history books. But man, let's just get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get your spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so you can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so when we jump in, like one of the first things that gets me is like how we jump into just the headspace of T'Challa. Because when we dive in and we see him heading towards Wakanda, to where at this time the invasion has reached like your outskirts of your burning Bajanga, which is like your far west of the Golden City. But even with T'Challa heading over to Wakanda as fast as he can, with him being a king first and him needing to protect his people, and it puts him in this rush out and get in transit mode because aside from being a king, he's also an Avenger. But even underneath the big titles and all that stuff, like he's still a man. He's a brother, he's a lover, and he's all of these things wrapped up into the Black Panther. And when we jump in and get an initial look into his headspace, we see some of these things overlap a bit. And this happens when we see him thinking of Storm, who he had just seen taken out in King and Black after putting up a hell of a fight. But when she falls to know, T'Challa immediately has a switch from Avenger to King. And with his father T'Chaka speaking to T'Challa and giving him counsel within his mind, he has these moments where images of Storm just flash before his eyes. But even when this happening, he has to tell himself like don't think about her keep going be present and really just snap out of his feelings and take heed to what his father is saying in this moment and like with just seeing that on the first page like that's huge because i know like right now that there are countless people under the sound of my voice who can connect to that concept alone to where it feels like you're needed everywhere at the same time and that's t'challa right here but with him honing in and being present and listening to the words of his father t'chaka then tells his son the five claws of the panther clan which are duty knowledge honor loyalty and justice and by the teachings of vast victories live in the mind behind that claw and this mind per se that has to make these decisions and figure these things out this mind is the black panther and when T'Challa responds like, what about the claw? Well, who's the claw? And his father then tells him like, oh, well, yeah, you the claw too. Like, you, you know, you both of them. You got to figure it out and you got to execute. <laughs> but it's crazy because it's giving us this moment where T'Chaka is pulling in T'Challa's focus and he's preparing him not only for the headspace of defending his people, but then also preparing him to know how to maneuver this claw, this figurative claw that he can't just wave around without a thought because victory does not live behind that type of action. And when T'Challa touches down, on your western outskirts of Wakanda like he exercises this method right away and when he does he calls for all his warriors he rallies them all to him and he lets them know like we can't save the fallen but by bad teeth no one else here is gonna fall and with doing this he blasts all the symbiotes out of there getting the win for this battle but really just buying time before these symbiotes reform and start to make their way into the city again but then it's here where we jump over to the golden city to where we see Okoye and Shuri kind of coming to their differences on how to combat this invasion and in the case of Okoye she's a soldier and her strategy is just fight 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 but in the case of Shuri she's looking at how closely these symbiotes are closing in since they've already made their way through Wakanda's shields and she lets Okoye know like because these symbionts aren't like your typical type of invasion to where you either have ships moving in or typical soldiers which you can take down and they stay down but instead it's like everything these creatures touch they take over including their own soldiers and people and because of that Shuri tells Okoye that their best chance of strategy is just to evacuate Wakanda altogether and you know Okoye ain't trying to hear that but right after this T'Challa then arrives and he's then greeted by his sister and Okoye and T'Challa and Okoye are going back and forth with T'Challa giving updates from the field and Okoye kind of like we'll skip all that how do we fight these things and T'Challa's like we got to get who we can to safety and the others we got to get them into bunkers and then Okoye is just like what about the older people and the younger children like they're not going to be able to move as quickly whether evacuating or trying to take cover but through the course of this conversation between T'Challa and Okoye, Shuri is softly calling T'Challa and she called his name at least four times but even with that like I'll go out on a limb and say that T'Challa heard her each and every time that she called his name because I also believe that he knew what she was going to say next which as it turned out was Shuri asking where's Storm and even till now like he still sees her face in that last moment but in response he just tells them that Aurora is no longer a factor and what T'Challa tells him like he puts the mask on quick like let me put the mask on before they see these tears 
<laughs> but no really like he keeps his composure and a lot of the times this gets taken as someone who lacks feeling or someone who may not care as much about a person but in the case of T'Challa we know for a fact that that's not true and even though him and Storm aren't married anymore we had gotten the proof not too long ago with the intergalactic empire of Wakanda to where after T'Challa was missing he came back and him and Storm expressed very much that they missed each other and even as far as to the extent of them saying okay we love each other we're not putting a title on it and instead have that love share it and express it without an additional title tearing them apart and it was really like an understanding that they had which we had seen in the Black Panther series but then on Storm's end every now and then we would get a hint towards it in Marauders so make no mistake T'Challa's hurt but sometimes in life figuratively you gotta cry in the car and that's more so the case of what's going on here. But from here, T'Challa then tells Shuri and Okoye the plans for the next move, which for Shuri is to bring out her prototype from Vault 14, while Okoye pilots the Hand of Bast, which prior to this time was supposed to be a secret, but man, ain't no better time than now to bring that thing out. But then it's also here where they reach the end of the hall and T'Challa pulls up the hollow screen and he zooms in like 1000% and they see that the Null Dragon which has arrived within the boundaries of Wakanda's shields and it's just crop dusting symbiotes all over the people. But also with this new observation they find out that the symbiotes are adapting even further to their defenses by exploiting frequency variances in order to get through Wakanda's shields. So it's like these symbiotes are learning and they're helping each other out. But from here T'Challa lets Shuri and Okoye know that he has a plan that that he doesn't have the time to just spell out right now because with the increase in breaches their clock has gotten even shorter and because of that they just got to take their positions and wait on T'Challa's word and they both kind of pause for a second and then Shuri she goes but then Okoye she gets a word in and she asks T'Challa like is he sure that he wants to reveal the hand of Bass to the world and he just stops her there like yes because it's going to send a message to the symbiotes much like the message they sent to the scrolls in Secret Invasion and from there Okoye then goes to get the hand of Bass. But it's here we then make our way to the streets of Burn and Bashinga, which is like your first city to the west side of Wakanda. And I mean, fortunately at this point, it hasn't gotten too crazy over at Burn and Zana, the golden city, but I'm pretty sure at this point, they kind of know what's up too because the invasion's just been kind of creeping in from the west side and making its way into multiple cities. And this is where we see Shuri show up using the prototype which she had developed in Vault 14, which allows her to be in multiple places at once. And when T'Challa sends her out, she uses it to appear in multiple cities to execute the task that he had given her, which was to protect the people. But even with Shuri doing this, she knew she was jumping into a task that was very danger close. And in the case of T'Challa, without him telling his sister directly, he had intentionally sent her out here, knowing that she would fall under the path of like your crop dusting dragon symbiote and when this happens Shuri's then taken by a symbiote and T'Challa then calls to Okoye and she's like is it time and T'Challa's like yes and from there Okoye then brings out the hand of Bast and immediately it is King Kong versus Godzilla in these streets like it's ridiculous and like one of the first things I feel like people might ask is like why didn't they bring out the prowlers which are like your huge mechanical panthers like what we had seen when T'Challa had met the Hulk for the first time but it makes sense that they didn't go that route with the hand of bass being like pure energy and not as tangible or destructible like the prowlers would have been but on top of that like to me the craziest part about this is like while this is happening and T'Challa is talking to Okoye who's piloting the hand of bass but like within this conversation they kind of just brush over the fact that the Hand of Bass was built to kill the Phoenix. And I know the Phoenix Force is out there reading this comic like, who? <laughs> like, I know they ain't out here in Wakanda planning to kill me. But at the same time, it kind of makes sense with everything that's going on in Avengers right now concerning the Phoenix Force. At least that's what I'm guessing right now. I haven't read all of it just yet. But let me know what you guys think, either in the comments or on Discord. But as it turns out, like what happens here is like with T'Challa sending out Shuri and sending out Okoye, he had also been working on the part he would play as well. Because while they were out T'Challa he then went and grabbed the hand of Ulysses Claw and modified it so he could do the final strike but before he can make his way out Shuri she then returns to him but when this happens Null is speaking through her and he's more or less trying to get into T'Challa's head because when Null gets here using Shuri's body he tells T'Challa like why'd you let this happen to me no it took me but T'Challa doesn't fall for it because he knows better and he more or less keeps moving to do what he needs to do because he knows that that's not truly his sister and it really makes me think of like we watch either these zombie movies or them crazy horror films where they're like oh a loved one's been possessed like what do you do and it's like you don't stand around and have a conversation like you fight them off and you get out the window and with T'Challa who does exactly that he makes his way to climb up one of the giant panthers so that he can finally execute the last part of his plan which his father had been guiding him to figure out 
because just before Shuri was possessed by the Null symbiote and taken over, T'Challa had then modified the weapon of Ulysses' claw so that it would then connect with the shields of Wakanda, which would connect with T'Challa and then push all the symbiotes out at a new frequency by using electromagnetism and high frequency vibrations. And like with the way that T'Challa's father like guided him to this idea, like his message to T'Challa at this point wasn't like nothing scientific or anything like that. But instead it came by the way of T'Challa's father reminding him of a test that he had when he was younger to where T'Challa would usually fight one on one but instead of fighting one on one he had to go up against five. And when T'Challa was beaten he was really hard on himself. But with looking back on this T'Chaka then reminded T'Challa of the story of Bast and her younger sister Anansi to where Anansi had trapped Bast in this container which appeared to be a drum and the harder that Bast would try to work to get out she would then be wrapped tighter and tighter in Anansi's web. But when this happened Bast had one little claw left kind of like a pinky toe and Bast had to use that one little claw to free the rest of her body because sometimes if you only got one claw left that one claw can still be enough to make a huge difference and that was a story that kind of steered T'Challa into using this whole tactic which worked out pretty well and I mean like if you can see it from space either something went really right or really wrong and it went right here but with doing this T'Challa then freed Wakanda again while also freeing Shuri and pushing the symbiotes back keeping them at bay and at least for now. But we'll have to continue through King and Black to see how long this will last and see if someone has a solution or at least a deterrent to keep Null at bay. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the Patreons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below so we can go to patreon.com slash dopespill. But that'll do it for this one guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And we'll do it again in the next one. Alright, later.